In this video, we're going to play around with Fast Embed, a lightweight Python library for generating embeddings. So from the GitHub page, the thing that stands out to me is the light and fast section. So it talks about quantizing the model weights, not having a PyTorch dependency and having a CPU first design. If we then sort of scroll down, we can click on the models and we can see the list of models that are available. And then let's just come back to the readme and we can see that installing it is as simple as pip install fast embed. We're now going to come over to the terminal and load a JSON file that contains some articles about the AI safety summit held in the UK this week. If we have a look at the first document, we can get the keys and you can see we've got a URL, we've got a title and we've got the body. The body is the most interesting thing for us here. So let's get the first sentence for the first article. And you can see that comes back. What we're going to do now is import from fast embedding down embedding. We're going to get the flag embedding class, and then we're going to initialize it with one of the models. Now let's see if we can embed one of the sentences. And you'll notice that it comes back with a generator. So if we want to actually see the embeddings, we're going to have to use the list function. And you can see it comes back with a whole lot of numbers. Let's just get the first 10. And you can see there we go. We've got a NumPy array of values. We can also apply the query and passage prefixes to the text that we're embedding. Now, if we put passage, it means that we are creating an embedding for contextual understanding. So that's what we'd be using for the text that we're embedding for storage. Whereas if we use query, it generates embedding for similarity comparisons. So that's what we'd be using when we're trying to look something up. So let's try first by putting the passage prefix on our sentence and it comes back with some values. You can also use the passage underscore embed function and just go with the raw sentence and you'll get the same result. We can do the same with query. So let's put in the query prefix. Now, if you're doing want to do the, the, the equivalent here, we need to take out the arrays uh, around the sentence. So just pass in a singular sentence and then use the query embed function. Let's have a look what happens if we store it. So we're going to import ChromaDB. We'll create a client and we're going to initialize a collection as well. Now let's go through our documents and we'll pull out the inter variables, the URL, the title and the passages. Now we're going to create the embeddings. So we're going to call for each embedding, we're going to call dot to list. And we need to do that to convert it from the NumPy array just to a list of floats because that's what Chroma can deal with. And then for, and then we'll call the passage embed function on, on the passages. Then we're going to add them to the collection and we'll pass in the passages as documents, the embeddings, and we'll also pass in some IDs and some metadata. Now let's write some queries. So our first query, so remember we need to put in our query prefix. Is there going to be regulation of AI? And then we're going to call collection.query, pass in the embeddings on that query, and we'll get three results and then we'll get the results back. And you can see it comes back with a bunch of results. You can see at the bottom, we've got the documents. If we scroll up, we can see the IDs and the metadata and the distance uh, from the result. We're only really interested in the documents. So let's just go back and update the previous command just to pull out the documents. And you can see the answer to this question is probably the third document in there. Let's try another query. So where was the summit held? Uh, and you can see it comes back. The first one this time has the answer. So it was hosted at Bletchley Park in Buckinghamshire. Now, what happens if we remove that query prefix and we just use the default embedding? So if we run it again, you can see it gets similar results. But now, interestingly, the, the actual answer has gone down into second position instead of first. As in my experience, it's a nice library to use. It does seem pretty fast and it's cool that it's designed to work well on the CPU. If you like this video, you might also like this one up here about hugging faces text embeddings inference library.